the Agave Social Club Podcast, hosted by me, Doug Price. Everybody, Doug Price here with the Agave Social Club. This is the Suerte Tequila episode for the podcast video recap. Why don't you go ahead and check out how Suerte became an actual tequila brand. Uh, we've had scenarios where you've got friends sitting around in a backyard sipping on tequila. And at some point, somebody says, we should start a tequila brand. <laughs> and and for most 99.9% .9 of those scenarios, that is the extent of that business plan. That was not the case for you and Lance, your co-founder. Can you share the journey of what it was like from we should start a tequila brand to actually starting Suerte Tequila? Essentially, the way it worked for Lance and I was that we had both been working in the consumer packaged goods industry, um, producing and selling and marketing skincare products. And we kind of knew the back end of an operational situation, how to operate a business. And we were learning a lot about tequila together. We both had passion for tequila and for Mexico in general. And so the first time we said, hey, let's start a tequila brand. We were at the liquor store in, in Boulder, Colorado, where, where we're based, and looking at a shelf full of many different varieties of, of tequila and, and brands of tequila, and just looked at each other and said, man, it'd be so much fun to start a tequila brand someday. We're having fun with soap and lotions and all these products that we're doing now. Um, wouldn't it be really fun to, to apply everything we know to a tequila brand? That was the first time we said it, and then what happened from there was we, we agreed that we would start in doing a lot of business planning to, to see what it would take to start a, a tequila brand. And we worked on it off and on pretty hard for six years, actually. And so what happened for us is we would sit down together and we'd do a lot of business planning and we'd be writing notes and, and outlines and documents and things and trying to figure out the best way to set up a business plan for a tequila brand. And, and every time we did that, we came to the point in the conversation where it's like, okay, clearly... What we're seeing here on paper is that it's going to cost millions of dollars to actually create and build and be successful with a tequila brand. And neither of us had the money at the time. So every time we'd get to the point where we realized we needed a lot of money, we'd put it aside and kind of just start keep focusing on the job, the jobs that we had at the time and our families and paying our bills and doing what we needed to do. But that went off and on, I'd say, for six years to the point where Lance found himself working for one of the largest agave nectar importers in the country, which just so happened to be based here in Colorado. And one of his trips down to Mexico to manage the supply chain for that business, he met Pedro, he met our master distiller and came in contact with him for the first time. And so that's kind of the background. I mean, it, it took a long time and a lot of questions and answers and research and all that kind of stuff that we were doing and talking to people in the industry and trying to figure out how we would actually go about starting a tequila brand of our own. I heard once, and, and you can tell me if it's true or not, that when Lance was in Mexico, he was somewhere, I don't know if it was a party or a gathering, and, and it was somebody that he, he did not know came up to him with uh, a open bottle that, that didn't really have much packaging or labeling on it and said, try this, which, which normally is not advice we you know would, get, would give our kids. Right. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So... It's, it, that's exactly what happened. So there was, there, there was someone that he met other than Pedro initially at this party. Culturally in Mexico, one of the things that happens, a, a company or a supplier of some good to a buyer will actually throw a, a party or a lunch or a, an occasion to celebrate their partnership and to get to know each other better. And so what was going on was Lance was invited to a gathering, a, a dinner or lunch probably, because in Mexico, it often happens over the lunch hour. But he was invited to a lunch that was being thrown in his honor because he was one of the largest buyers of agave and agave nectar from this one particular company down there and this one organization down there. And at that event, there was one person there present who had a bottle of Pedro's Blanco tequila that was truly unmarked and, and asked him if he wanted to taste it. He was a little skeptical, but he listened and heard the story and he said, OK, I'll give it a try. And so they sipped on some and he, he thought it was exceptional. And so that person had said to him, I know you're from the States. The guy who makes this is looking for someone in the U.S. to fill bottles for. He's got a lot of surplus. 
He's been trying to do business in Mexico without much success. If you know anybody in the US, will you please take this bottle home with you and share it with, with them or with somebody to see if maybe there's a possibility of an introduction that can happen between someone you know and this person that I know, and we can match it up and, and try and get people connected to, to work with one another. And, and so that's, that is truly how it happened. And so then after, you know, six years uh, off and on of, of thinking and prepping and business planning, he brings this bottle to you and you guys say, hey, this may be the opportunity that, that we've been waiting for. Yeah, without a question. So he, he brought the bottle home. He set it out on his kitchen table, invited me over, offered me some. And I, I noticed there was no label on the bottle. And so I said, well, wait a minute. I should probably ask a couple questions. You know, what's, what, are you, what are you having me drink here? If there's no label, like, what is this stuff? You know, and he's like, it's Blanco tequila. It's really good. Just, just give it a try and then we can talk about it. So I did and I agreed with him immediately. We had been at the time, we had been tasting pretty much every brand on the shelf we could find. We were buying every bottle we could find taste testing and just getting to know over that six year period, we were spending a lot of time getting to know what was out there on the market, what we liked, what we didn't like, why we didn't like things, why we did like things, and just trying to figure out where we would fit if we were truly going to start a tequila brand together. And so this bottle was magical for us. It really tasted better than most Blancos we had tasted. And uh, I asked him to tell me the story, which he did, which I, I just shared with you. He said, look, we've been talking about starting a tequila brand for six years on and off. We keep putting it down and picking it up and putting it down and picking it up. I'm wondering if today you would commit on a handshake to move forward with our dream and our vision to start a tequila brand. And I said, well, what's the story? Where did it come from? And he told me that about Pedro and about how he had met somebody who knows Pedro and that he could get in touch with Pedro and talk to him. And, and so I said, yeah, absolutely. I'm on a handshake. So we agreed that day in his kitchen to, to go head first into creating a tequila brand. And the agreement was, is that we'd give it a try. If we were successful, then we would be successful and, and move forward and build a business. And if we weren't successful, we had agreed that we would finally put it to rest for good, that we, we would just stop working on it. There would be no more back and forth, up and down, yes, no, let's do it, let's not do it, that kind of thing, and worrying about it. We just wanted to give it a shot. And so that's what that first bottle of tequila represented to us. And then how soon from that spot, how soon were you guys back in Mexico with Pedro kind of talking through what this would look like? It was roughly within two to three months after, after tasting, after I tasted that bottle that Lance had brought back. The first thing we did was contacted Pedro and asked him if he'd be willing to work with us. He said, yes. Um, he had explained that at the time, the distillery that he owned and was running with, that his family owned with him was for sale and that they had been entertaining the possibility of selling the facility. And so Lance actually at that time got on the phone with Pedro's uh, cousin, who was one of the lead investors in, the, in their project down there, and convinced his cousin at that time to pull the, the facility off the market and to not sell it and to work with us. So at the same time, what we had done is we had requested from Pedro whether there was a way to get more samples from him. So we were looking to taste, obviously, Reposado and Añejo, and because um, we knew he had those, but we didn't have access to them. So within a couple months, we had booked flights and made plans to go down there because not only did we want to meet Pedro in person, talk with him and his family and try and put a deal together, but we also wanted to get some bottles of his tequila to bring back with us so that we could start sharing with people and let people try it and taste it and get, get people's feedback. You go there, you're tasting it, you're liking what you're tasting. You, you guys are, are talking with Pedro and it sounds like, you know, since it's been in his family and, and tequila on its own is very family centered and traditional you guys kind of work a deal to, he, he's a part of Suerte as well. And now you guys have started Suerte Tequila. How, how soon from starting it to actually having product out on the, on the shelves or in the restaurants? Well, that trip when we went down, the first trip, we, we spent a lot of time uh, visiting with Pedro and his entire family and getting to know each other. That's the beauty of Mexican culture and doing business in Mexico is people, people genuinely want to know who you are and what you're about and they want to get to know you before they enter business relationships with you. So we spent a lot of time that trip for a couple of days getting to know each other. And then the trip culminated in Guadalajara where we went to uh, one of his family's offices 
uh, where we got, there was a couple lawyers that were present and we drew up a, an agreement that was a two year agreement. They were going to produce tequila for two years that we could bottle under the name that we, we hadn't, you know, come up with the exact name yet, but that we were going to import under whatever name we created and we were going to import and sell a certain amount. And so we had a signed agreement when we left that time to get started from there. It basically took us eight months to get everything put together, all the legal work done, all the branding work done, everything that we needed to do and getting our first shipment of tequila into the US and specifically into a warehouse in Denver, Colorado. It was an eight month period, basically. I hope you enjoyed that video recap of Suerte Tequila. If you want to hear the entire episode, you can go to Apple, you can go to Stitcher, you can go to Spotify, and you can listen to the entire episode in its entirety. Uh, again, subscribe, rate, check. I uh, would love for you to just continue to be a part of the Agave Social Club. In the notes, there'll be opportunities where if you want to click to purchase Suerte Tequila, you can do that as well. We'll see you on the next one.